Reddit preparing to unleash world's biggest short squeeze in silver. So this is one of the biggest opportunities in the world. Now, uh, people are turning their attention towards silver, which has been one of the most manipulated assets in history. And the more manipulated it is, and the more su uh, suppressed the price of something is, the higher it is going to explode once uh, it, it, the free market unleashes it from its manipulation. Never let a good crisis go to waste, and I guarantee you, they're not going to let this one go to waste. Over the past week, we've seen small investors turn the table on the big banks, brokerage houses, and funds. And uh, the Wall Street elite are not very happy about this. Um, and what is going to happen most likely is that this will be used to limit the power of the small investor and increase and entrench the power of the Wall Street elite. That's just sort of the way things go, uh, and that's what I'm expecting. This video, however, however is actually about silver, uh, but I can't talk about silver without talking about what has triggered one of the biggest, uh, some of the biggest news in silver uh, in a long, long time. I believe that there's going to be a crisis bigger than what happened in 2008, and it's going to be something that comes out of the blue, like this GameStop thing and the current uh, thing about shorting, uh, about going long silver and busting the silver shorts. So, uh, you know, we might call this video Eat My Shorts. <laughs> We're not sure. So on the radar, uh, Robinhood caps the maximum holdings in 36 stocks to just one share. Now, uh, Robinhood stopped all purchases of GameStop, which was a, a, a stock that was going ballistic and it was busting a big hedge fund called Citadel. Uh, and uh, these things actually threaten the entire financial system because it's so interlinked and it's so highly leveraged. These guys get to run the ragged edge of what is barely legal. And it's only, it's basically legalized theft. Uh, you want to stick around for, for the end of this video. There's a great quote at the end. But um, the uh, one day after the company drew down on its bank lines and obtained a billion dollars rescue capital investment. So Robinhood is in serious trouble because of what is going on. And they had to uh, stop trading, but they would allow people to sell. They just wouldn't allow them to buy. Right now, you're limited to one share or five shares of a particular stock. You can sell as many shares as you want. Well, that is downward pressure. They're trying to cap the amount of gains that the small investor can make in this legal casino called the stock market. So they've made it illegal for the small investor. The big funds can still come in and buy uh, a million shares or 10 million shares or 100 million shares. You're limited to just one. Uh, so criminals at Robin Hood only allowing five shares. Of, this is first majestic silver to be held. They are scared. And yes, the entire financial system right now, the, the boat is rocking so bad it could tip over. So this guy had 18 shares and he was trying to purchase more and it exceeds the limit of five shares. So he can't buy any more. He's capped at his limit of five shares. George Gammon. George is uh, like a friend, and if you want some great information on how the world monetary system works, on how uh, the banking system works, go to George's website, and he's going to teach it to you in three easy steps. Anyway, uh, yesterday uh, he uh, tweeted, who's making more money on GameStop, David or Goliath? Before you answer, think about what all the hedge funds and Wall Street trading desks are doing now that didn't have a position two weeks ago. 99% of the time, volatility helps the pro, not the amateur. And then just two hours after that post, breaking news, just read BlackRock, part of nine Wall Street investor group, to make a combined total of $16 billion on GameStop. If you think Wall Street beats is hurting Wall Street, you're not seeing the forest for the trees. Now I do need to say, that these guys, the big Wall Street elite, they are sharks, they are carnivores, and they are cannibals. They will eat each other. 
if Citadel is hurting, all the rest of them will pile up uh, with, with uh, uh, positions that will help bust Citadel. So basically, they got on the same side as all of the little investors that were buying up GameStop uh, to try to bust the short position because it's called a short squeeze. And when these big short positions have to buy their position back, which they do, and they're suffering painful losses, that causes the stock to go even higher. And so that's what they've been causing. Google deletes nearly 100,000 one-star uh, ratings from Robinhood reviews amid the GameStop uh, scandal. Now, um, this, you know, I can't ta talk about censorship on this channel because I might get censored and they might take my channel away from me if I talk about censorship. But here they just deleted all of these reviews. People were pissed that Robinhood would, would cap their positions or stop trade, you know, buy orders completely and only allow sell orders on this thing to try to keep the small investor from making a profit at the expense of some big Wall Street fund. And uh, so they got together and tens of thousands uh, of people gave it one star reviews and it actually took the entire rating down from like 4.5 stars down to one. And so Google went in there and deleted all of those and got it back up to like a four star rating. Uh, just really should be criminal activity, but uh, Google's a private company. They can do whatever they want. Facebook bans Robinhood stock traders group with 150,000, 7,000 members. Now, you know, like I said, I can't talk about censorship or I might get censored. So read these articles for yourself. Uh, Kaspar, it's happening at 3 uh, to 4.30 p.m. Pacific. A plane will be flying with a banner over San Francisco that says, suck my nuts, Robin Hood. <laughs> and so uh, here's the flight plan. And then the guy said, you know, somebody sent him a picture of, of the thing actually flying. And uh, he said he's going to have it put on his gravestone. I want to welcome the 4,512 subscribers this month. And if you do subscribe, after hitting that subscription button, hit this notification bell. That's very important. Uh, you'll get notified of the, on the next video that's coming out. I said this is going to be about silver, and I'm turning towards silver now. And you're going to see there's another video coming up after this one in a day or two that's going to be very important and tell you the story of how the big boys can change the rules on you. Uh, whenever they're losing, they make sure that they don't by changing the rules. So hit that notification bell and give our videos a thumbs up. This all helps uh, our, the, the algorithms that YouTube uses and it recommends watching this, these videos and more and more people will know about this. So if you like this information, help spread it and the way you do that, subscribe, notification bell, thumbs up. Thanks. The chart of the day is going to be charts of the day. There's a number of them. So, uh, so Peter Spina, you know, I've, I, I know Peter. I've interviewed him before. He's a great guy. Uh, in this week's COT report, that stands for Commitment of Traders, uh, for those that uh, are unfamiliar with this. The biggest eight traders are short uh, by this many million ounces. Uh, that's, that's huge. So this is Ed Steer uh, talking about this, and Peter is quoting him. And this is their short position down here. This is open interest, the number of uh, silver contracts that exist on the commodities exchange. And then uh, these are the positions that are net positions after you've canceled out the, the positions that uh, one entity might have that are both directions. So it's the net shorts. And the commercials, the big commercial bullion banks are short here. And then these are the other funds and small investors that hold the long position. And these net out to zero. For every long, there's a short. But these shorts, they make up a silver contract out of thin air and they sell it into the market. And so you're making up 5,000 ounces of silver at a time that didn't exist before, paper silver. You sell it into the market. And that is downward price pressure uh, when you make up fictitious silver that doesn't exist and sell it. And so you're seeing uh, the price rise here. When it's rising, the shorts at some time or another must buy back their short position. When they buy the silver back, 
this, even though it's paper silver, that's upward price pressure. So when people get together and start buying and the price goes up, they're caught in a short squeeze. They have to buy back. The price goes up further. And the last man out uh, might be the bank that is suddenly bankrupt, that, that uh, ends up getting a bailout. That's what's going to happen. So Peter writes, uh, uh, this is massive. January's silver investment demand so far is over 65 million ounces. Ed Steer had reported on the transparent holdings. Peter added back in the amount of silver eagles produced by the U.S. Mint and then the uh, silver produced by the mints in Canada, Australia, and Austria. And he ended up with 65 million ounces, which is pretty massive. So here is the silver investment. Uh, there's the millions of ounces on the, uh, the total published. So this is transparent silver holdings where they publish the statistics for the repositories. So this would be the commodities exchange, mutual funds, and the ETFs such as SLV. Um, and then these are, these are the days of production. It will take 170 days for the biggest uh, shorts to cover their short positions. Uh, this is, you know, this type of stuff really should be criminal activity. Um, they're selling more than actually exists, but right now the eight largest traders, uh, they're up here to where it'll take close to six months of entire global production of silver. And, you know, if you're new to this story, I tell this story in my book, which was originally uh, written back in 2005, 6, 7, and, and uh, a little bit in 8. I updated it in 2015. It's more pertinent today than it was back then. And it's free also. We'll get to that toward the end of this. But this is how many days of global production it takes to cover this short position. Despite the huge rally in AG, that is First Majestic Silver. So this is a silver producer, the stock of a silver producer. On Thursday, the short position increased by 400,000 shares. These shorts are playing with fire, and they are. But one thing I want to talk about when it comes to short positions is uh, that there, there's actually more owners than there is real uh, shares of stock that exist. When you short a stock, the broker will go into somebody's account and borrow shares from somebody that bought it that's long and loan them to you, and then you get to sell them in your, in, into the market. You're now short silver. You own the, owe, owe them back, but you don't have them. They're, those shares are gone. Uh, they're owned by somebody else. But do you see what's happening here? You've got somebody that still thinks they own it, that it's in their account and it shows in their account. And then on the other side of this thing, you've got another person that just bought those shares. You own them back because you're the short seller, but some other person also owns those shares. So the same share shows up twice in these accounts. It's, to me, this is highly immoral and should be illegal. Uh, so I will document the process of taking delivery of one contract of Comex Silver here on Twitter, even if he has to fly to New York to do it. Now, taking delivery, this game will work for a certain period of time until the people that run the game change the rules of the game and they do this. If they're on the losing end, they're just going to change the rules. If everybody shows up at the commodities exchange and the vaults in New York, uh, what will happen is that they'll just do a force majeure and you have to settle in cash at whatever the spot price is. This is the reason that I personally have been buying physical silver for years. I don't do it on the commodities exchange. Now he's talking about turning a contract, which is fictitious silver, into real, the real silver that they owe him. And if too many people do that, the silver just isn't there. And so the way they get out of this is just declaring force majeure and uh, they don't owe you anything except paper dollars. And so you can be on the losing end of this. Another thing, when um, uh, there is a squeeze like this, uh, when everybody starts rushing in to precious metals, the spreads between the spot price and real physical go huge. And uh, you, you can, the people that are, are dealing with SLV, GLD, uh, the exchange traded funds, futures, options, they don't get to take advantage 
of the increased uh, the premium over spot that physical commands. And these things can go huge. I'll tell you about it in a moment. But this is the flow of funds into and out of SLV, which is an exchange traded fund for silver. And so everything red is funds going out of the dollars going out of the fund. Everything green is dollars going into the fund. And this is enormous. These are the previous spikes here. Uh, you know, one of the things I didn't tell you about the, the uh, commitment of traders reports, going back to that, is that uh, those reports are from, they're reporting on the end of the day of Tuesday and the report doesn't come out till Friday. So what you are seeing doesn't include Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So uh, that part of the video where I was showing you the short position and the long position in the price, the price reflects the current price, but those positions are uh, changing rapidly and uh, there's a lot of people that have been going long and that proves it. Reddit preparing to unleash world's biggest short squeeze in silver. So this is one of the biggest opportunities in the world. Will the powers that be allow the small investor to take advantage of this? We shall see. Uh, so uh, this article is about, you know, while everybody's focused on GameStop, uh, a handful of other heavily shorted stocks are exploded higher. And now uh, people are turning their attention towards silver, which has been one of the most manipulated assets in history. And the more manipulated it is and the more su uh, suppressed the price of something is, the higher it is going to explode once uh, it, it, the free market unleashes it from its manipulation. Uh, now, uh, this <clears throat> is from a, a Reddit article, and I believe a lot of this was posted by uh, a, a, a one trader. But anyway, these are some of the reasons. Silver bullion market is one of the most manipulated on earth. Any short squeeze in paper shorts would be epic. Uh, both the industrial case and monetary case. And one of the things that I've been saying for a long time is its monetary demand that is going to blow the lid off of this thing and cause it to go ballistic. When people are running toward precious metals to protect their wealth, uh, that is when it goes ballistic. Uh, debt printing has never been more favorable for the number one inflation hedge, silver. Actually, the number one uh, has been gold lately, but silver is uh, the number two inflation hedge. Inflation silver adjusted should be at $1,000 instead of $25. Now, I'm, sh I'm not sure if it's $1,000, but it could definitely go there. And I've been saying this for close to two decades now, that silver has this amazing explosive potential just because of the setup. Uh, link to post removed by mods. I do not know what that means. By his modifications, uh, why not squeeze SLV to the real physical price? Uh, well, um, being the real physical price being 1000 And now I'm going to talk about SLV. Uh, think about the gains. If you don't care about the gains, think about the banks like JP Morgan that you'd be destroying along the way. Well, JP Morgan will just get bailouts and bail-ins. They'll end up with your currency. If, if they go, un they're not going to go under. The government will make sure of that because if they do the entire global uh, monetary system freezes up. Uh, so this was uh, in this article is a uh, part of a post from the happy Hawaiian. And he cites two reasons here. And I've just taken the first one here, the short squeeze. And he's saying buy SLV shares or PSLV, which is one of the sprout funds up in Canada, physical silver and SLV call options to force physical delivery of silver to the SLV vaults. Will it? You know, I, I put this in my book. I've been following this for years. And here, what he's done is taken from the original SLV prospectus. And this is details on SLV uh, physical settlement. When SLV issues shares, the custodian is forced to true up their vaults with the proportional amount of silver daily. And this is from the SLV prospectus, and it is. I believe this paragraph is in my book. If not, it's in some videos where I analyze it. Now, 
these funds are owned by some of the world's biggest banks and brokerage houses. And uh, they have armies of attorneys that put together these documents. And you can't just read the prospectus. You should also read the 10K filings uh, and do some research on this. If you dig deep and then you read it with an eye of how can these people lie to me? How can they change the rules? How can they win if they're, how can they turn the tables and suddenly win when uh, they're losing and I'm winning. Uh, and so you have to take a look at this and read it with a very suspicious eye. And investment in shares is, and there's a colon there for some reason, instead of just saying is backed by silver held by the custodian on behalf of the trust. I mean, this is one sentence. If that was a semicolon and then there was a comma here and it was a list of things, I would understand the reason for that. But what does this do if they're in court? defending this? What does this do legally? You have to look at all of this. The shares are backed by the assets of the trust. So the shares are backed by the assets. They're not saying silver in this sentence. They're saying the assets. Could the assets be futures and options and other derivatives also? They've got a colon here where it says that it's uh, backed by silver held by the custodian. And then the trustee's arrangement with the custodian contemplate, contemplate, they're thinking about it, that at the end of each business day, there can be in the trust account maintained by the custodian no more than 1,100 ounces of silver in an unallocated form. Now, 1,100 ounces, the reason it isn't an even 1,000 ounces is COMEX bars, the deliverable bars, are 1,000 ounces plus minus 10%, which is crazy in this day and age where you could... Uh, you know, all of the machinery can be uh, computerized and they could get this within a tenth of an ounce if they wanted, but they don't. Um, uh, so in unallocated form, the bulk of the trust silver holdings is represented by physical silver. So the bulk of the holdings is represented by physical silver. More than half <laughs> is represented by physical silver. We don't know what the other half is. I mean, how, they're, they're, these are attorneys writing this so that, the, so that SLV can't get sued, and if it does get sued, uh, they're not going to be found guilty in court. Um, identified on the custodians or, if applicable, subcustodians books in allocated and unallocated accounts held uh, on behalf of the trust and is held by custodian in London, New York, and other locations that may be authorized in the future. It started off with the New York and London vaults, but in the prospectus, if a vault doesn't have the gold or silver, they can nominate some other vault that does. And so this has spread out to, into sub-custodians, sub-sub-custodians, and the silver and gold is being held all over the world in these funds. And you can't stop trading in these funds for uh, uh, you know, several days and have all these vo uh, vaults audited all over the world at the same time to make sure what they say they've got is actually what they've got. Now, another thing, like I said, you can short these funds, and that means they're borrowing a share from somebody that's long silver. They bought it because they, they think the price is going up. They, you borrow that if you're shorting it, you sell it into the market, and now two people own that same ounce of silver. There's more shares than there is silver backing it up once somebody has shorted it. So, uh, you know, analyze this and make sure that you don't get hurt. That's one of the things that I'm concerned about. There's a, a video coming that you really need to watch if you're interested in this silver story about the Hunt brothers, and they change the rules all the time. If somebody's winning and they're winning big, they will just crush you uh, and so that they don't get hurt. Uh, now, this is the biggest crime uh, in human history. Uh, I put this in here because it does have to do with gold and silver and what is going on right now. This is the Fed's balance sheet as a percentage of GDP, the, the U.S. economy. So what's the size of how much the Fed owns compared to the size of the economy in one year? All the goods and services bought and sold in the United States in a year. And what you see here is this, is, this goes back to the inception of the Federal Reserve, and we've got World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, the global financial crisis, which includes QE1, QE2, and QE3. Then we grew the economy faster than the debt grew. 
And so this shrank. And then well, the Batman Wu flu. Uh, and uh, if this is a true crisis, and if there are big uh, brokerage houses, hedge funds, and so on that could be going under, if they're burning the midnight oil right now, if they're burning the midnight oil, it could be that the Federal Reserve is up, the Treasury is up, the, uh, the, the, the Securities and Exchange, the uh, Commodities and Futures Trading Commission, and they're all working on this problem right now. And then we find out on Monday that there have been bailouts, that uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions have been arranged. Uh, somebody's taking over Citadel, for instance. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But uh, this is only going to increase in the future. Now, the way the Federal Reserve does this is they create currency. You know, there's a certain amount of currency. They expand the currency supply by cre creating new currency, and they get it into circulation by buying something. The Fed's balance sheet is stuff they bought with counterfeited currency, and it equates to almost half of the U.S. economy. And the Federal Reserve is not part of the government. It's a corporation, and the shares of that corporation are owned by the biggest banks on earth. Viewer feedback from uh, my last video about GameStop, GameStop and Next Silver. Uh, so, Wall Street riggers don't like getting beat at their own game. I love it, and I love it too. Thank you very much. It should be illegal to share more than exists in any market, whether it be stocks, bonds, commodities, crypto, etc., etc., etc. Yes, if you own a home, it's illegal for you to sell it to two people. <laughs> sell your home twice. That's exactly what they do with stocks. And this is what the Federal Reserve does uh, in, in a sort of indirect, a slightly different manner. Uh, there's a certain amount of dollars that exist, and they just create more. And they're, so they're at their, and, and they sell, when you buy something with a dollar, you're selling the currency to buy a product. And so they're selling more dollars than exist and buying stuff up with it. Uh, we are watching, watching history happen here. No kidding. Thank you very much. We are. Uh, this isn't a market. It's a rigged market. The free market died years ago. Yes, Todd, 1701. Uh, the free market did die years ago, and I've spent the last couple of decades trying to wake people up to this. In a free market, two people get together and they make a transaction because both parties are going to benefit. Um, and uh, half of every transaction, that transaction, half of it was the good or service being bought or sold. The other half was the currency being used to buy or sell that good or service. And uh, the currency... There is a group of people that get together eight times a year uh, are the scheduled meetings. It's called the FOMC meetings at the Federal Reserve. And they decide how much currency is going to exist and what the cost of that currency is, the interest rates. And so you've got a manipulated currency. 50% of every transaction is manipulated by the Federal Reserve. They're going to decide what the value of that currency is by setting the quantity and the cost of currency. And so the free market died years ago. The day the free market died was November 16th, 1914. Now, the Federal, you'll say the Federal Reserve, when it, you know, the, that act was passed in uh, December of 1913. Yes, it was, but they didn't open up their doors. The first day that the Federal Reserve started manipulating the economy was November 16th, 1914. So we have, the free market died back then. Now, in a crisis like this, everybody starts yelling, the free market isn't working, capitalism is failing, we've got to do something. And we get more and more socialist, uh, more and more manipulation, more and more laws and rules, and less and less of a, you know, what is left of uh, what used to be the free market. And, um, but in order for capitalism to fail, you would have to have capitalism in the first place. And we haven't. We haven't had capitalism for years and years. What we have is manipulated market cronyism. Cronyism is all of these uh, big lobby groups, these uh, people that represent the drug companies, they represent the financial sector, they represent this sector and that sector. They get together and they use a crisis like this one 
to uh, change the rules, entrench themselves, and they write these laws. I don't know if you remember the affordable health care plan that raised everybody's insurance premiums dramatically. I mean, everybody at my company, their insurance premiums, mine almost doubled uh, because of the Affordable Health Care Act. And it entrenches these companies forever. And competition, it's a 19,000-page document. Nobody, no congressman or senator that passed that bill could read that thing. And so who wrote that? Well, who writes it are the insurance companies that, that, that give it to the lobbyists. The lobbyists give it to the, you know, a senator, a senator uh, proposes this bill and it gets passed and everybody else gets screwed. Uh, the quote of the day. So we're nearing the end here. And this is a great quote. You want to hang around for this. But first, get my book. It's free. Go to goldsilver.com. Click that link right there or go to goldsilver.com slash free book and download the best-selling book on investing in precious metals. And uh, a, a quarter of this is a very entertaining monetary history. A quarter is some simple economics. A quarter is the state of the global economy, at least it was. Uh, you know, things are changing rather rapidly right now. And then the last quarter is how to invest in gold and silver and the different options that you have. Also, again, subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's going to be some important videos. Uh, some of them are about history, and history is going to repeat. And the big uh, uh, Wall Street elite that are basically raping and pillaging through uh, society, and you know they, they take us all for a ride, uh, they are going to be the winners in this thing. And it's just history repeating. So learn some of the history. If you're investing in futures, options, and SLV, you may end up on the short side of the deal. Another thing I want to say before I get to the quote, um, <clears throat> back in the crash of 08, uh, the spot price of silver kept on falling. It went from uh, $21 all the way down to like eight bucks. And uh, while it was doing that, the price of physical silver soared. There was a dealer I heard from in Chicago, uh, $18 an ounce on a day that silver was below nine. When I looked on eBay, silver eagles were going for up to 36 bucks an ounce, uh, and, and the spot price was at nine. Now, if you're invested in SLV, GLD, uh, or, or uh, futures, you're getting the spot price. Uh, when uh, the uh, physical and the paper fictitious silver diverge in price, and they do, you're not going to get a piece of those winnings. So now for the quote of the day, one of my favorites, Frederick Bastiat, he was on the legislative directory uh, during the French Revolution. And he would write these wonderful essays and read them in the French directory, just like um, Ron Paul used to grill Ben Bernanke in front of Congress. He would do that during the French Revolution and make these brilliant economic arguments to get all of these uh, legislators that are trying to pass all of these laws that they think are going to help people, but there's unintended consequences. And he wrote this brilliant series of essays called That Which Is Seen and That Which Is Not Seen. Please buy those. But when plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society, over the course of time they can create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. Thank you very much, Frederick Bastiat. I want to wish you all the best. Please be careful. This is a, a volatile time. It's very interesting to watch the small investor turn the tables on the Wall Street elite, but protect yourself. And for me, that means buying physical gold and silver. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.